Can we just talk about what a year it's been for Nintendo? After a glorious 2021 holiday season, they open with one of the best directs and then immediately start blowing shit up. Taking down music on YouTube, delaying Zelda, delaying Advance Wars, the horrendous reports about workplace conditions, no general E3 direct, and oh, how can anyone forget the Xenoblade 3 Special Edition pre-orders? Never ask a woman her age, a man his salary, or a Xenoblade fan what happened on June 8, 2022. Now, the software itself? Fairly solid. Kirby with two amazing titles in Xenoblade 3 sparking a nice trilogy. They got Mario Kart buzzing again. Fire Emblem Three Hopes was a game. But no one has gotten hit harder this year than the multiplayer fans, with both Switch Sports and Mario Strikers heavily affected by the toxicity that is, take a shot free updates. Mario Strikers is actually a pretty fun game that gets old quick at $60, miles behind the titles that preceded it. It just needed some more characters or stages or just something to spice up the base ingredients. Whereas Switch Sports has most of its content, um, that game just sucks. And now Splatoon 3, the grandfather of free updates. We were all worried. But they've been doing this since 2015 on the Wii U. In fact, it would be fair to say Splatoon as a series has never not known free updates, so they must be doing something, but I just realized we've had the entire Splatoon series happen since we last got a new Donkey Kong. Fuck you, Nintendo. Have you ever wondered what happened in between New Leaf and New Horizons? Why this game launched complete and then seven years passed only for the next game to launch half-ass with an update model? The answer literally is Splatoon 1 and 2, made by the same team within those years. And why would I ever want to dabble with the very thing that has me losing sleep at night? Still, I felt myself drawn to Splatoon 3 not even because I enjoy the franchise or because the two dipshits down the street hyped it up so much, but because I needed that good multiplayer Nintendo experience that I've been craving, and to tell you the truth, Splatoon 3 was everything I wanted. Probably. I wouldn't know, the game won't let me play it. Alright, so shooters. I don't play them often, this year I've only played two, Halo Infinite and the final boss of Kirby 64. Meanwhile, Splatoon, I've only played a little bit of the first game, which I rented on Gamefly. <laughs> As a concept, it always felt to me like a Mario Party minigame that went on three minutes longer than it was supposed to, the lack of team strategy replaced with the chaotic mind of seven-year-olds, and in Splatoon 3, nothing has changed. But wait, those seven-year-olds are now 14, twice their age, and oh no. So I don't know what kind of godlike confidence I had going into this, especially when I didn't play the beta or, you know, the past two games. I was getting my ass mollywopped. That said, Splatoon 3 isn't exactly the most welcoming game to new players. Most people are veterans coming off the experience from one or two and have learned the expert ability that is motion controls. They're familiar with the same weapons, the same maps, the overall concept, in addition to also receiving bonuses from Splatoon 2 save data. So people hopping into Splatoon Splatoon 3 have more disadvantages than most, but a lot of us are here because those other people, so I called them up. And after a few rounds with my friends, I can easily say, one, the motion control people are full of shit. If it does not feel right, do not force it, especially if you're a handheld king or queen. And two, wait a minute, what? No, is the strat really as easy as just avoiding conflict, hanging back and covering the map in paint? No, it can't be that simple. Yes. Yes, it is. Oh, okay, I think we did it. I think we did it. Did we do it? Did it work? Did we do it? Did... Hello? Is that... Whoa. Did we do anything at all? Was it all for nothing? Are we... Oh. Did... Okay, I'm done with Splatoon 3. Splatoon 3 is a silly game, but what makes it fun is the friends you have alongside, to the point where I'm actually not sure I'd still be enjoying this game without them. The single player mode, it's a lot deeper than Splatoon 1, and I didn't play Splatoon 2 or its expansion, so I can't comment on that, but it's still honestly kind of dry and feels like if they took Smash and made a whole campaign out of like, the target practice. The bosses are fun though. Running solo and multiplayer, also a bad idea, at least if your goal is to win. On the other side, you have Salmon Run, and this is the splatty daddy of game modes. It's your average horde zombie defense club mode, but with randomized weapons, and you can make it extremely difficult. But with the right squad of people, it's cheese in a can. Unless you all spawn with snipers, then you just, uh... There's other modes, ranked, anarchy nonsense, Tetris card game, eh. 
Splatoon 3 is a decent time. Worth the $60 upgrade and enough of a difference from 2? Normally I would probably say no, at least based on what I've heard. But at this point I'll take any small victory I can get. Good for you, Nintendo.